to record. Okay. Uh, hi. So uh, here's the title of my talk today uh, from Diagram to Code, a web based uh, interactive graph editor for digital sound processing design and code generation. So this is actually the title of our paper uh, for the next web audio conference. And it is true that I'm going to present you this paper and related works. But before that, I wish I can firstly present my research field, which is uh, quite different from other members of Wimix. And even though I hope it's still uh, interesting for you. So for the moment, I am officially a PhD, and a PhD student in musicology, with, which is artistic, but my research involves a lot of new technologies because I want these technologies to be useful and especially inspiring uh, when we are making new music today. There's a, a lot of uh, terms just for saying making music. And there's even more terms to describe the, the kind of the music we make. In fact, in the conservatory I studied below the music creation department, uh, you have two branches, composition and music writing, or écriture. And this is already confusing. In fact, the, the major difference between them is about aesthetic, where music writing students learn how to write music in Mozart or in a Chopin style, or how to write an epic background music for a commercial film. Uh, but it's to explore pro uh, possibilities within an existing popular music style. Well, in composition branch uh, where I was, we are going to create new styles of music or new way to create music. For example, we use traditional uh, musical instruments in different ways to produce unusual sound or noise, uh, like putting things inside a, a piano to modify the vibration of its chord, or we put hundreds of different loudspeakers uh, on the stage and try to mix the music in real time, or we fabricate new electronic instruments or use sensors to to create sound. Uh, I'm not here to trying to judge which is more creative, but I, I want to say that obviously we always need new technologies to make music. And this is why I'm here to uh, trying to take the benefits from the web and find a way to use them artistically. So uh, in this presentation, I will concentrate uh, at the graphs that we can find nearly everywhere today in the music production work. I will start from a, a brief history to tell you why the graph is so important in, in the music world. Then the state of the art of audio processing languages and software for artists and why we chose web technology in our research. And finally, how we designed this web-based graph editor for audio processing and composition uh, and a demonstration of our application. So let's start from some um, analog audio devices like these pedals. Uh, oh, sorry, I skipped a slide. So these are pedals on the pedal board. If you are familiar with the project Wasabi, uh, you may recognize some of the uh, device ported to the digital world, such as the Big Muff. Uh, they are pedals because guitarists step on these to switch them on and off. Inside, of, inside these devices, there's a graph um, and electric circuit composed by capacitors, resistors, inductors, and transistors, and so on. So that they can act as an or an audio filter or modulation, reverb, delay, amplifier, distortion, and so on. When these devices are, are chained together, it's now a macro graph with electric wires that carries continuous signal uh, with electrical voltage changes. 
here is when the computers brought, brought us to the digital era in the 80s. This MIDI instrument it appeared and because we need a, a new, a good interface to communicate music data with computers. These data are abstract music information. For example, uh, which piano key we pressed and how we press, the, press them. So they are not digital signals. MIDI is the protocol we use to carry this data. Uh, it's designed for a cycle graph. The musician on um, one node plays notes on different channels and the following devices picks uh, pick information of its own channel to proceed and pass the other information to the, the next device. Uh, MIDI devices uh, can be a, a synthesizer, a sequencer, an arpeggiator, a harmonizer, and so on. And when CPUs get more and more powerful, uh, the, digital, the digital audio workstation or DAW gradually take over analog mixing tables. Though they are in the same principle, which is mixing multiple tracks of sounds together. Audio plugins are here to replace uh, analog effects like pedals or MIDI synthesizers. So usually you can insert these effect plugins into tracks to modify the sound on the track. Uh, so they are typical digital sound pr processors or DSP. And DSPs are usually interesting if we need, uh, need to design or to produce or to modify any song. There's a, a lot of different standards like VST or other units AX for traditional uh, workstations. And this is why uh, sound engineers go straight to use visual program languages or VPL that can edit directly graphs of these, gra of these DSPs. And clearly, uh, here's an analogy uh, that the graphs of how we connect processors were already there and before computers even exist. So besides uh, what you hear is what you got. Uh, when the graph is connected, the sound flows through the, the graph in real time and you can have algorithms user interfaces and visualizations all at the, the same screen. So the language becomes uh, very interactive. However, the, the solution is not perfect due to the, the difficulty to optimize the, optim uh, the perf performance and the lack of an explicit semantic uh, of the algorithm. Here's Max. Uh, originally called the Patcher, is one of the first VPLs created by uh, Miller Pocket at ICAM in Paris. Uh, ICAM is for uh, Institut de Recherche et Coordination Acoustique Musique, uh, Institute of Research at the Co Coordination of Acoustic and Music, and it's one of the, the largest research centers for computer music. Uh, most of the uh, French composers still learn Max in conservatories because it's designed for composers. Um, the first version deals only with MIDI messages, but already very useful for, for composers because at this time uh, they were doing a lot of algorithmic composition. Um, so they calculate to, to produce nodes and we recalculate to having the next nodes. So, me, so Max can really help them to calculate nodes randomly or with some rules. Uh, when computers are able to compute audio signals in real time, here's MSP, uh, which is added to Max, which is a library uh, with basic DSPs. Here, by integrating original Max items, uh, some non-audio events can be used to change the DSP's behaviors. Mm, this aspect is really important for composers because they, they will be able to like trigger samples or apply, apply sound effects in, in real time during a concert. 
uh, lots of pieces are uh, composition pieces are, are created with this system when musicians play acoustic instruments on stage along with electronic sound coming from the speakers. And later on, uh, video processing is also added to, to Max and called Jitter. So composers can uh, design a real multimedia show with it. Here's some other Max-like languages such as Open Music, which goes further uh, for the algorithmic composition. And there's pure data and open source max like language have this VVVV um, and touch designer for video or visual, visual artist. Uh, and we start to find some uh, more web based max like VPLs, such as cable JL or this web audio designer and so on. Uh, in fact, um, our work is similar to them, but different and special. One problematic, problematic we are dealing with is how we, we get a better performance with this editable uh, graph. Because in Max and MSP, a DSP node proceeds and input audio buffer, then output to another. Uh, so this data flow approach slows down the calculation and may produce lots of garbage. Uh, one solution is to compile a part of the graph so that the, the buffer will not be iterated again and again. Uh, but of course, if it needs to be recompiled, uh, there would be no more this real-time aspect. So it, it will be better if this um, compiled algorithm is static. For example, uh, this Unreal Engine Bruce, Bruce, Blueprint is uh, such a, a graph editor that will be compiled in, in the end. Or there's a module in Max called Gen, where you can design a, a graph with some basic functions. Then the graph will be interpreted to an intermediate language called Gen Exper, or Gen Expression, uh, will be compiled to lower level code and finally become a DSP. Uh, that can be used in a normal um, MSP patcher. And in our case, we decided to use FOST, uh, which is a language um, to act like this intermediate uh, language between a graph and a lower level DSP. As FOST itself is a graph related language. We will get back to this later. Uh, now I want to talk a little bit about the web. Uh, why I'm going to make a web-based Max-like VPL. So web technology really facilitates uh, the connections and the um, interaction between people and between human machines. A web application is easy to access just by like clicking on a link or scanning a QR code. Uh, this already changes how we imagine and design art pieces. We see uh, in some of installation arts or even live music, where the audience, by using applications on their phone, can already affect the music or, or the sounds they heard. Here is an installation I made. Uh, the visitors here will scan a QR code to open a web application where they receive notes generated from an AI on the server. Then they can modify the synthesized sound by moving the phones. Oh, here's a demo, the video. Donc les notes sont euh, envoyées avec euh, euh, le Wi-Fi. Yeah. So this is um, my installation. And here's another part, which is the, the collaborative aspect of the, the web is also important for music because 
acoustic music like chamber music or, or symphonies or jazz are already collaborative and musicians come together to play or improvise with instruments and mu modern technology kind of isolates musicians as one single person is now able to produce a whole complex music on a computer. However, there's some new forms of music called live coding. Uh, it means that musicians improvise by coding algorithms uh, that generate live music. Here's an example of uh, collaborative live coding from the, the last web audio conference. There's actually three people uh, on the same code, and one is from uh, at the distance. You can see on the screen, there's a, a third person, and uh, they are editing the same code, which generates the live mu music. While they are typing the music evol uh, some evolution in the in music. Yeah, and maybe just for fun, here you can see Michelle. Michelle Briefa playing the, the pedal board. The guitarist. Then here's me uh, playing acoustic piano, but I'm like playing on inside the piano with the chords. You will not hear uh, it's loud because it's acoustic, but it's really fun if you want to try to play. Yeah. Um, there's the third advantage is the the from uh, the capabilities uh, the web API provides. We can use different sensors, hardware, or tools for visualization just with a browser. And the browser is av available uh, at most of the, the personal devices. But however, uh, making sound in the browser was not simple. Uh, Web Audio API is um, a young standard, and we've been waiting for a long time to get a, a relatively stable implementation. It is not yet fully implemented on Safari, Safari and iOS. Um, Web Audio is also based on graphs. There are some native audio nodes um, av available to make sound, uh, simple sounds. Here's a list of them. Again, filters, wave shaper, uh, reverb, and delay, com compressor, panner, and so on. Um, the last one called audio worklet is the most important one for us, as it allows to, to make customized node with our own DSP algorithm. Here is an example of pure a uh, web audio graph created from our editor. So here the, the audio is coming from the microphone and goes to an am amplitude modulator or AM with a lower frequency oscillator. 
LFO then goes to a feedback with a delay of 0.3 seconds. We can modify the parameters using UI components. I can show you this demo. Hope. So, um, I don't know why I, my sound is not coming in. Maybe I should refresh. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it's with Zoom, it's not working good. Uh, I'm going to change it from audio into an oscillator. Hope it's not going too bad. Oh, I know. It is because I'm not turned on the audio. You see that um, there's a, a parameter called uh, gain in which I modify in real, real time, time. And, and it will affect the, the feedback going. Um, so this thing may not be really ex uh, impressive because there's also other applications doing exactly the same. Uh, but now I'm going to talk about how Faust can help us um, to customize DSPs from graphs. See, uh, Faust is a text-based language that can describe an audio graph. It is open source and can export the, the compiled DSP to lots of targets and platforms, including web audio. Uh, the first compiler has its web assembly version that can compile false code into in the, in the browser as another web assembly module DSP, uh, which can be used in an audio workload node. With false developers at Gram, I wrote this false IDE uh, with these features. Basically, you can write false code with auto completion and the syntax highlighting. You can watch the graph you, uh, you describe from the code. You can test the, the DSP there uh, with MIDI or audio input. You can visualize the resulting signal to debug. Uh, you, and you can control the parameters with a, a user interface. Then um, you should be far added to the, uh, the browser, the, the IDE a tab to design and export the, the DSP with uh, the user interface. They become web audio plugins and can be used in Wasabi pedalboard or in other web-based digital audio workstations. And now we are uh, working on the version two, a new plugin standard with these um, workstations makers. It's called Web Audio Modules V2. So the plugins can now be used uh, on more and more hosts. Um, I can actually show you uh, an example that how WAMS web audio modules um, acts in my in my tool here you can see i imported a, an audio file i can play it and here is the big muff i can turn off and on and this work okay so back to Faust, uh, the language uh, could be a, a good intermediate language between a graph and a DSP. And in fact, the language is designed to be an interpreter to calculate from an audio graph to some machine readable low level codes. So it provides a very efficient solution to let us be able to like describe complex audio graphs into plain text. Then it's up to the, the compiler to make these texts understandable by machines. 
This process is called block diagram algebra. Uh, block diagrams algebra is the powerful side of this language that takes care of both human users and machines. Its text-based form might be a sweet point. However, it's still not easy to learn. To write in false, you need to learn how to manually translate a graph into the code uh, and to flatten these tables and connections into plain text. And this needs sometimes hard work, especially for beginners. So I wanted to uh, develop a tool where we can design a DSP without coding. The, the user uh, just connects functions with uh, cables and the tool will automatically generate the corresponding false code and compile the DSP. Uh, this is really like how MaxGen does. The difference is just that the whole process happens in a browser. And let's take a look at how Gen works. First, each box represents a function that takes some arguments or inlets. Note that a predefined argument will replace an inlet into a constant value. Second, when Gen analyzes the, the graph, it will iterate all the outputs and search the, the connections above. So without any connection, its inlet will be the default value zero. Then multiple connections into the same inlet will be merged and added together. If you need to introduce a loop in, into the graph, it should be delayed by at least uh, one sample by this history operator. Uh, there is the same thing in the first. And Gen also supports two types of sub process. You can use a code box to write some Gen expression code or put a sub patcher, like a graph in the graph. These sub process are especially useful when you want to reuse it in different situations. Now we can translate a graph into first. Here, are some normal functions, uh, nothing special. And then uh, the loops, they are easy to connect with the graph. Uh, then the sub process, a code box where you can put false code uh, and the sub patcher where it's just a nested algorithm. And here is the, maybe the most interesting and trickiest part is the, the sort of Lambda function that will be iterated multiple times. And this doesn't exist in, uh, in Gen, but I found this quite useful and a good plus for this system. So in this example, you can see part three means it will uh, output three signals with the same sub process. So we have three outlet, outlets with an additional one uh, that will attach to our sub process. In this force, uh, fourth outlet, the variable iterates starting from zero. And it means that we are going to have oscillators with three different frequencies uh, for each subprocess. And to complete this uh, subprocess, the resulting is going back to the inlet of this par, par three. You can see in the generated code, the subprocess is transformed into a lambda function. And the last thing we need in this system is some UI components. Just as declarations in Faust, we can put some sliders, buttons, groups, and so on. Uh, the corresponding UI can also be generated in the web page. One existing thing, we can also interpret the gem patcher to Faust code uh, as we are finally using a similar graph design. Here's an example of false patcher and gem patches. Uh, they are becoming all the worklet nodes and can be used in real time with MIDI inside the patcher. I can show you this example here. Yeah. Um, from the input I have, my MIDI device connected. And when I play some notes on my keyboard, 
going to have some sound synthesized. And with the bit cursor, which is uh, an effect to reduce the uh, resolution of the signal. Uh, sorry. Going too far. Mm -hmm. Let's restart. Like this, and inside the P post, you can see the the post picture, which is the the sub uh, process, the graph of the DSP, and you can see the corresponding false code, which is already compiled, and Gen to. Uh, so this is about uh, faults in our system, but how about the, the interactive part? Uh, can we use some of the web API to map buttons or sensors to trigger the sound or to do anything you want? So to complete this idea, we are going to patch JavaScript. So in order to do that, we need to transform JavaScript, the language itself, with all the web API based on it uh, into nodes or boxes here. We need some UI elements to pass events or the calculation. Then we will be able to import any uh, external JavaScript modules from an URL. Um, if we investigate a little bit about this language, we can find following elements that we need to have their equivalence in, in the graph. So some arithmetic operators and keywords like new or from the prototype chain functions or method properties, getters and setters. And we need a way to handle conditions and loops and finally, lambda functions and subprocess. To make the graph work, uh, we have some basic rules, like in Max or in pure data. Firstly, there's a priority difference between cables. When data coming from one outlet uh, uh, should be delivered to multiple destination inlets, the position of these inlets will be used to compare, compare the priority of these cables. The, the inlet at the right side will have a higher prior, priority and will receive firstly the data. If they are aligned vertically, the one at the bottom will have a higher priority. And why is that? Because boxes have a hot and cold inlets. A hot inlet will perform an output of the result and it's always at the left. And the second rule is that the text will be passed uh, to three parts, uh, the class, the argument, and properties. Each element is separated by white space and be considering as a, a JSON stream. The first element in the, is the class identifier where which de determine the function of the box and elements after the identifier are arguments. It can be considered as parameters of an, a function. Then there's um, element strings start with the character at. It will be considered as the box property name and elements after the property are its values. So, um, the arguments and the, the properties indicated in the box, uh, the box text only determ determine its initial state. And they can be changed any time uh, with any operations without changing the, the text. Here, for example, you have box uh, plus two at text align right, uh, initialize the box class with plus and with one argument, which is two, and the value 
uh, right of the property text text align. So the text is appeared um, aligned to the right. Uh, then there's a, a special event called bang, uh, which is emit, emitted by this button, this round button. Then, which is um, an event to tell any box object to start its function. And the band contains no additional information. It only, it's only purpose to trigger immediately anything, which is likely to output the previous result or store a value, a stored value. So here's some demo for this. We have this basics um, patch. If I press this anything, you will see uh, B is happening before A, and same in this case. And I can input uh, values from this slider, uh, and it outputs the, the value and plus by two. Um, here, you can have a loop because you have your output connected to your to a code input, so that it's just storing the results but not output it. And here's a ban. Right. And here is an example of different operators in the graph. And these are not difficult to understand just for yeah, just, just for this new number, uh, the input is considered as the first argument of the, the constructor number, if it receives a bang, it will call the constructor with no arg argument. Uh, there's also this funk number box, which do not call the, the constructor function, but output the function itself. So here's the example for this. Uh, I can clear this result. And when I press this 42, we have all the results. Uh, obviously type of 42 is number. And here you have instance of compare, comparing the number and the, the class of the number. And here's the ternary, ternary uh, operator, which receives zero uh, or falsely um, number and outputs the second argument. And if it's true, you can have the first. Then here's the normal arithmetic, uh, arithmetic operators. Then uh, we're going to have some conditions and loops and in fact, graphs can already describe these structures as conditions are basically different branches and loops are outputs uh, go back to inputs. But there um, could be other useful structures for them. For example, conditions can be verified using uh, the ternary operator or using gate to block uh, the, the data flow. Or the graph on the left is a, a loop here, uh, is a loop with a condition. And the right one is a for loop with predefined borders. And yeah, for the left one, you can see here's um, a cell for selectors. If you select two, it means uh, you will choose this branch and output the stored data here. So if I press zero, it will show uh, after the loop, the result. And um, yeah, here's the different uh, implementations of the conditions. So when gate is closed, nothing will pass and the gate is on, you will have data pass. Then, um, how do we import all the functions and properties? Basically, 
uh, when the system is initialized, it scans recursively in the global variable window and imports everything inside, which uh, everything inside, which includes most of the JavaScript built-ins and uh, web APIs. For this imported box uh, with functions, the default number of inlets corresponds to the number of arguments of the function. In case the number is variable, user can also set the number by the args property. Um, maybe I can switch to the slide. Yes. So you, you can have a, a, a really long list of import, imported uh, functions or web API. Mm. Also the well, the, the box receives a bang or an argument from its first inlet, the function will be called with the argument stored, then output the return, return value from its first out, outlet, along with the, the arguments after calling the function uh, from the rest of the out, outlets. And for those which are imported from a JavaScript prototype, uh, we simply put dot dot uh, in instead of dot prototype dot like here number prototype to fixed uh, to shorten a little bit the, the string and um, there will be a, a, an additional inlet and an additional outlet for passing an instance of the prototype and this facilitates the, the calling of the, the instances method or using its setters, scatters, or, or, or properties. Um, here you have a window console log that will log the, the actual window um, object, but we can change it to like alert to make it appear like this. Uh, here's uh, the imported function escape and here which is equi equivalent to getting the, the static value of max safe integer and uh, call its method to fixed with the first argument two. Here it is. Then below this demo, uh, there's an example of Lambda function uh, that is used by reduce. In the reduce, the Lambda function takes two um, arguments, which is uh, uh, accumulated value and the current value iterated. Um, now, then you can see in this case, you have um, this Lambda function uh, which is declared by um, two uh, arguments and they are going to the same function plus and the result is coming back to the lambda function uh, because uh, the com coming back to the lambda object. Um, so when I press on the button, it will start it by uh, create a new float 32 array with 256 um, elements. This will return its length, which is exactly this value, and it will fill everything by two. And finally, it will use this re reduce uh, method with this lambda function to add all the values together like this. All right. Now, um, with all these tools, we can try to build a graph with some external JavaScript modules. Uh, let's see this example, um, GL, which will import a um, library called 3JS. Um, and the 3JS is a module to, to create some web, web GL graphics, and we can Firstly, set up uh, a camera and a light, a material, and a cube mesh. And finally, add them together to our scene. Uh, we are using 
this request animation frame with a lambda function that will be called each frame to rotate the cube. And here's the result. And all these are achieved by import uh, this three JS uh, module. And you will find here all the elements imported. Um, here's the second example, which is, it might be more interesting for, for you guys, is D3. Uh, you see here, I am in uh, presentation mode uh, so that I only see this uh, graphics, but I, if I can go further, it's quite a, a complex graph uh, with all these functions. And maybe it is um, it's true that write this code, um, write, write all these things in code is might be a, be simpler, simpler, but it's a proof of concept, and it's always good to have an additional option. So here's the all the values, and uh, with these graphs, I added um, the axis and all the the values visualized. And finally, the last example, which is a uh, killer, <laughs> uh, is ported from a Google Magenta project called uh, Performance RNN. And yeah, it's load, it's, it started to load this library. And there's a paper. Google Magenta is Google Machine Learning for Music. Yeah. So here's the paper uh, I can also have this uh, here. Uh, I'm not going to read this paper, but basically, it's um, like uh, it's it uses a neural network that train is that it's trained with a piano piece data set, and is generating notes using TensorFlow JS. The uh, I'm also using this in my previous uh, installation art. You you just see, and the it's true that the program is quite complex but in the end it use it uses faust to synthesize the sound so it's generating all the the midi nodes from above when i click on this it will load all these modules uh, the models then now it's playing You can change the density or using a different scale. Okay. So yeah, um, I'll advanced. Um, so now I'm working on some on this editor uh, and get it trying to get it more artistic friendly. Um, there's also some tools like audio editor like this so that you can like cut or paste some part of audio uh, just on the uh, platform or replay it. And you can also bounce it uh, with another type, another format and export. This is one, and I um, also integrated um, a music score compiler called Guido, which is here, and it can actually visualize a musical score. And hopefully, this will uh, I will get more uh, algorithmic composition modules um, will be that will be coming. So the project is called uh, JS Patcher, uh, which is open source on GitHub and free, feel free to use or report bugs and so on. So thank you for your listening and, and please please ask for any questions. <laughs>